All right, you guys ready for the word? Oh, great. <laughs> Let's try that again. You guys ready for the word? All right, praise God. <laughs> I was getting nervous up here. All right, and maybe, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, all right, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every person. I pray that you bless them, touch them, allow your word to minister deep within their heart. And Father, I pray that today, as we sow seed deep within them, God, I pray that you will allow it to transform us forever. In Jesus' name, come on, everybody says amen. amen. All right, so we've been in this 21 days of fearless living, and so what I thought I would do is I thought I would end this idea of this 21 days of fearless living with something that, honestly, probably everybody in here deal, uh, has dealt with, or let me just say it with this, like this. It is inevitable that you're going to deal with this thing. You ready? And it is the greatest fear that man really lives with all throughout his life, especially if you're unsaved. Now, if you're saved, you're not supposed to be fearful of this thing. But if you're unsaved, most people are fearful of it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Come on, death. How many of you know it's common to the human experience? How many of you know you're not getting out of here without it? Yeah. Right? Death, it's one of those things. It doesn't discriminate. Doesn't matter who you are. It, it happens to old it happens to young. It happens to mo mothers, fathers, sons, daughters. It happens to everything. Everything on this planet is subject to it. And it's, it's, it doesn't discriminate based upon age, color, race, demographics, where you've been, where you're going. It affects everybody. And can I tell you, most people live their life completely fearful of death. But can I tell you, for the believer... It's not supposed to be that way. Some of you are like, wow, he came out of the gate heavy today. <laughs> Just go with me on it, all right? I promise we'll get there. But here's the truth. There is a thing called death. And if we don't understand it and why God implemented it and why God allowed it, then oftentimes we'll be misled as to what its power has and has, doesn't have over our life. So as we begin to look at it, I'm going to give you a couple things. Number one, that you, you need to know this. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't, it doesn't pick. It, it affects everybody. Check this out. This is what Genesis 2.15 says. This is the origin of death. This is how it came to be. It says, Then the Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day you eat, help me out, you shall surely die. So notice that. Death was there already, but he didn't have power over him. Death was there. He says, but the day you eat, you shall surely die. Now, let me just kind of clarify what death he was talking about. He was talking about a physical death, but that isn't the one that happens immediate. The first one that would happen was a spiritual death. So whenever Adam and Eve ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they died. Instantly, they died. You say, what do you mean they died instantly? No, they lived several hundred years longer. Why did they die? They died spiritually because, get this, they were separated from God at that moment. And that is what spiritual death is. Spiritual death is separation from God. Spiritual death leads to physical death. Okay? You say, why is that important? Because spiritual life leads to spiritual life. We'll get to that here in a minute. But here's the truth, you ready? So in that verse, there's a whole lot. Let me unpack it this way, you ready? And I'm gonna kind of take my time with this, but here it is. God created death before he created Adam. Now think about it. God created death before he created Adam. God allowed death to exist, he made death. And some of you are like, why did God make something so bad? Well, let me just tell you, in the mind of God, it actually was an act of mercy and grace that God created death. <gasps> How can that be? Hear me out. It really was an act of mercy. Think about it. There was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. God said, don't eat it. If you eat it, you'll die. God knew that if you rebel and you eat this tree, you need to die. Why? Do you want to live in rebellion for the rest of eternity with no plan of redemption. No way. But that was the setup. If God did not connect 
the tree of knowledge of good and evil with death, then guess what? You could eat and rebel against God and then live forever. Let me, let me fast forward. That means everyone who was wicked and evil would live forever. Now think about that. Think about it. You have wicked and evil people living forever. Hitler would never die. Mussolini, Mao, all the wicked and evil people that have killed millions and millions of people, they'd never die. How many of you know even wicked and evil people have to bow to this thing called death? And it's actually an act of mercy because God says, you know what, even their time runs out. Even their evil runs out. There is a time where it stops. So watch this. Death was actually an act of mercy. God created it as an act of mercy so that mankind would be limited and mankind on the earth would need a redemption. Think about it. If man lived forever in a fallen state, and there would, there would be no way to redeem mankind. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down or did I just go shoom right over you? Come on, everybody say, I got it. I got it. And for real, do you got it? You got it? You got it? That, that man needed death. Not, not, it wasn't a good idea. I'm not saying this is a great idea, y'all. I'm not, I'm not, like, uh, I'm not like about it. <laughs> not signing up for the class. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is this is why God allowed it and created it. Because it would limit. And honestly, here's the truth. If he wouldn't have created it, then the devil would never have to die. I'll get to that here in a minute, but here we go. So God created death before Adam. He really did. Death had no power over Adam. Listen to this. Someone in between services asked me, Pastor Charlie, how come kids die? Kids die, people die, because Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is not God's will for death to take place. It was Adam and Eve who chose. And get this, death had no power over Adam. Adam was in the garden just fine, as long as he didn't eat the tree. As soon as he rebelled, he released it. It was like Jumanji on steroids, <laughs> all right? As soon as Adam and Eve ate, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it released this thing called death. And, it, and they had no way of harnessing it. No way of harnessing it. He had no idea what he was releasing. So death had no power over Adam. This is so important. It is so important that you understand death had no power over Adam. Jesus is called the second Adam. Death had no power over him. He said, unless I lay down my life, no man take it. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up. That's your savior talking. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Death had no power over the second Adam. Why? Because he never sinned. I'm going to connect it here in a minute. Death was dead as long as they obeyed. As long as they obeyed, death had no power over their life. None. Even though it existed, it didn't have power over them. They could walk in the garden, yet death had no power. Watch this. The day they sinned, death gained power. Death gained power at the moment they disobeyed, okay? And can I tell you, same thing is still taking place. When people disobey, and I'm not talking about saints, I'm talking about sinners. When sinners disobey, they are allowing the spirit of death into their life. They really don't realize it. They don't know what's happening, but that's what's really happening. And, and I'll be honest with you. Those people that live, the, the harder into sin they live, you can even see it on their face. I've met people who are the same age as me, and I, praise God, what happened to them? <laughs> Come on, y'all. If you live long enough, you'll see some things, praise God. And, and it's because sin has a, de has a pay, ha has a payday coming. Anyway, the day, uh, the day you sin, death gains power. Watch this. Adam activated death when he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Are y'all following me? Now watch this. So death then gained access through Adam's disobedience. And now through Adam's disobedience, every one of us were made sinners. Is that fair, everybody? It's called original sin. We were sinners, all right? I say were because we're born again now, aren't we? Yes. I'm gonna say that again, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, we're born again, so we're not sinners no more. We were sinners. But we were sinners, get this everybody, this is so important. You were not a sinner because you sinned. 
You were a sinner because you were born after Adam. You were made a sinner. But when you, when you popped out and they slapped you on your butt, you were a sinner, but you never sinned yet. I know. You weren't a sinner because you sinned. You, you sinned because you were a sinner. <laughs> Y'all getting that? All right. You, you're, you sinned because you were a sinner. It's in your blood. It's in your DNA. It's who you are. Amen. And then you get born again. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're a new creation in Christ at that point. And then once you're born again, now you're a new creation. And now watch this. Sin has lost its power. Death has lost its power. And the power of sin over your life has lost its power. Okay? I'm going to get to that here in a minute. But anyway... So Adam activated death when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So then from that point on, any born, born, anyone born was now born in sin, okay? Born in sin. Now, let's flip it around, and I want to look at this from the enemy's vantage point and what he was trying to do with this thing, because this is important also. Listen to this, everybody. Satan had no power over man in the Garden of Eden. Is that fair? We know that Satan was in the Garden we know that Adam and Eve were in the garden. God gave man authority over the garden. Adam had power to do whatever he wanted. He could kick the tail out of the, out of, uh, the, the, the devil's tail out of the garden, praise God, right? He could take, he had no power. Now watch this. Satan hears that death has power though. The day you eat, you shall die. See, Satan knows I don't have power over man, but I know what does. Death has power over man. So if death has power over man, I need to figure a way to get death to activate itself in Adam's life. So that if I can get death to activate itself, if death activates itself, then guess what? Huh? If death activates itself, man dies and I inherit the earth. Getting it? That's how he saw it. So Satan now tempts man and activates death in the earth. Watch this. Satan has no power, no power over it, but he knows who does. Death does. So Satan wants us to sin to activate death in our lives. And this is the plan that Satan worked from the very beginning. Getting man, tempting man, so that man will sin, so that sin is activated in our life by releasing sin, then guess what? Then death is released in our life. This is why whenever Jesus was tempted, and after Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, and uh, Satan came against him again, and Jesus said, he said, the enemy has sought after me, but he has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. He can't tempt me. He can't do nothing. He can't touch me. I lay down my life. I'm not going to be killed or murdered because I'm, I'm sinless. I will lay down my life for the sheep. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? But the reality is sin is what gave death its power. Are y'all following me? So now watch. Here's, here's where I'm headed with this. You ready? Sin gave death power. If you defeat sin... You defeat, does that make sense? If you defeat sin, you defeat death. It's automatic. Because sin came and released death. So Jesus came to defeat sin and defeat death. If you can be free from sin, you can defeat death. You say, Pastor Charlie, you're saying we're not going to die. No, but here's what I am telling you. That whenever death does occur... How many of you know it's going to happen? How many of you know, though, get this. How many of you know Jesus has already defeated death and we're more alive on that side than we are on this side? That's the truth. That's what the word says. So now let's kind of pan this out. You ready? Listen to this verse and this kind of makes some sense. It says, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you of what? All your trespasses. Are you forgiven? Yes. If you're forgiven, that means sin and death, they're yoked together. They're two sides of the same coin. Listen to this. If he defeated sin, he defeated death. 
You can't have one without the other. If he defeated sin and you are free from sin, then he has released the power of death over your life. It goes on, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that were against us, which was contrary to us, he, may, he has taken out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, all the accusations that were made against you by the law, all the accusations that were made against you by the enemy, all the accusations that were made against you by your own conscience, saying, I'm a sinner, I'm a dirtbag, I'm a worm, I'm a this, I'm a that. Jesus nailed it to the cross 2,000 years ago for you. All right? Nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, and made public spectacle of them triumphing over them uh, in it. In other words, the cross is what defeated, watch, sin and death. Say, how did it defeat death? How do we know it defeated death? Because Jesus rose. Right? Now watch this. If Jesus rose, listen, people have, people have been resurrected before. But Jesus is the only one that was resurrected never to die again. Is that fair, everybody? People have been raised from the dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead. I mean, I'm not acting like that's no big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal, all right? But, but what I am saying is every other person who has been resurrected died eventually anyway, all right? But there was a man named Jesus who came and died and rose again, and he's never been killed ever since. He's still alive, amen? Amen? All right, so with that being said, here's, what our, here's where I'm headed with it. You ready? The only accusation that death has is that you have sinned. The only accusation, the only power that death, death has over your life is that you have sinned. That's it. When you read the Bible, that's the only power that it has, that you have sinned. All right? But what happens when you get born again? Are you a sinner? Oh, Pastor Child, I've been told all my life I was a sinner saved by grace. No, you missed it. You were a sinner saved by grace. But once you're saved by grace, you're not a sinner no more. You're a believer. I got three people. Praise God. Really doing a work here. I need to preach on this a little more, I guess. Come on, either you are a sinner or you aren't. Sinners go to hell because they reject Jesus. Saints go to heaven. Amen. Say, Pastor Charlie, I thought saints had to be voted on by the Catholic Church and they had to do three miracles and you had to wait until they die. That's what you thought were taught as religion, All right? Come on, I grew up in that. I know what it's, uh, it takes to be a saint. But here's what the Bible says. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus Christ came and died and rose again, you are saved. And if you are saved, you are a saint. And if you're a saint, then you're on your way to heaven and you are not a sinner. Right. Amen? Can't have it both ways. Can't have it both ways, all right? And if you're a Christian walking around saying you're a sinner, you need to quit sinning. Because <laughs> you're a saint, praise God, all right? And understand that title has nothing to do with your activity. It has everything to do with your standing before the Lord. And your standing before the Lord is not based upon your good works. It's based upon the blood of Jesus and what he did for you. Amen? Watch this. So the only accusation that death has against you is that you have sinned. But what if Jesus came and fixed the sin problem? Did Jesus come and fix the sin problem? Yes. Then does death, does death have an accusation against you anymore? Has no accusation, can't say anything. It can't say a word about you. It can't say nothing about you. You say, why is that? Because death had its day 2,000 years ago. Death Death attacked the wrong homie. <laughs> it attacked the wrong person. It attacked an innocent man. Listen to the wisdom of God. And I, and I promise you, I've never, I've never, I was thinking about this. I've been preaching for quite a while and I've never taught just on death. But because, and I've always thought about it like, man, I should do a series on death. But then I thought, how do I say that? Hey, I got this new series on death. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but, but, but on, a, on a serious note, on a serious note, most people haven't really, haven't really thought about it, which is probably a good thing. Uh, but most people haven't understood that death was created by God and it actually was an act of mercy. And even to go a little bit further, that death has limits and actually death has now been defeated and it has no power over your life. And therefore you shouldn't put up with death just like you shouldn't put up with sin. 
Most people don't go that far with it. You know what I mean? But I'm here to take you that far, praise God. All right? I want you to see that death has been defeated because Jesus defeated it. Death violated its own rules. Death only has power. Come on, help me out. Death violated its own program. When does death have power? Sin. Sin. Jesus didn't commit sin. He died an innocent man's life. Therefore, he devoided death of its power because death cheated and got defeated. Does that make sense? And now watch this. But Jesus did take upon our sin, okay? Our sin was transferred to him. So death killed an innocent man, but our sin was transferred to him. But now watch this. Now we are innocent, not because we never sinned, but because Jesus died for our sin. Therefore, now sin has no power over us, and neither does. I hope I'm connecting the dots. I hope people are understanding what I'm saying. Here's, here's, here's the point. Listen to these verses. This will make sense. Look at this. This, to me, is so cool. It says this. But now he has reconciled you to Christ through a uh, physical body through the death to present you holy in his sight. How many of you know you're holy in the sight of God? Watch this. Without blemish, free from death has no accusation against you. Has nothing. If death speaks to you, you remind death that, hey, the blood of Jesus makes me free, praise God. You are free from accusation. Listen to this. I love this, man. It goes on. There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in what? Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Watch this. For the law of life in Christ has set me free, or law of life in Christ, Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Notice that, everybody. There are two laws in operation. The law of life in Christ and the law of sin and death. You're either under one or you're under the other. You're either under the law of sin and death or you're under the law of life in Christ. If you're born again, you're under the law of life in Christ. If you're not born again, you're under the law of sin and death. Sin, by sin, you die. You're releasing death into your life the more you sin. This is why those who die without Jesus have no hope, right? Because they are operating within the law of sin and death. But those of us who have accepted what Jesus did for our sin, then now we are operating in the law of life in Christ. Isn't that fair? Law of life uh, I'm sorry, the law of sin and death versus the law of life in, life in Christ. And here's the truth. If we've accepted Jesus Christ, we're in the law of life in Christ. Death no longer has dominion over us. Listen to it this way. You ready? Here's the next thing I want you to see. Sin and death are unified. They work together, okay? When Jesus dealt with sin, he dealt with sin and death as a unified substance, Okay, this is why whenever Jesus would heal people, he would often say that your sins are forgiven and he would heal their bodies. And you say, well, why is healing and sin connected? Because watch this, everybody. Death is, has many different forms. We think of death as only as laying someone's body in the grave. But the Bible teaches that even sickness is a form of limited death. Anything connected to the fall was a part of that death cycle. Everything connected to Jesus in the resurrection is a part of the life cycle. Does that make sense, everybody? So let me go, go there this way. You ready? Sickness is limited death. The key to healing of sickness is the forgiving of sin. Are you forgiven of your sin? Yes. All right, praise God. So check this out. Matthew 9, 1 says this. Jesus stepped into the boat and crossed over and he came into a town. And some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on the mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are what? Forgiven. Forgiven. So what did Jesus do? Forgave his sin. Guess what? At the point that he forgives his sin, guess what he releases off of him? Death has no power over him now, right? Right? Does that make sense? Watch how the verse plays out. 
It says, and at, at this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow blasphemes. Knowing, thought, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Watch this. Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? I love Jesus. That, that's that gift of sarcasm right there. Which, what, which way you guys want me to do the miracle? Sins are forgiven or get up and walk? How about we do it both? Your sins are forgiven, get up and walk. You know, because here's the truth. In the mind of Jesus, both of them have the same root. Death. Death. Your sins are forgiven. Your lame body, they all have the same root. Death. And guess what? I can release you from death because I have the power to receive and take away that sin. If I can take away the sin, death has no power. Listen, here's the deal. You shouldn't be walking around fearful of death as a believer. Why? Because sin has no power over you. And if sin has no power over you, guess what? Death has no power over you. Say, but Pastor Charles, we're all going to lay down our bodies. I know we all will. But can I tell you, the Bible says, I'm going to get to it here in a couple hours, um, uh, that that, uh, the sting of sin is death. All right, and Jesus has taken that away. So watch this, you were born again. When you were born again, you entered into eternal life. When you lay down your vessel into this earth, all right, can I tell you, you're gonna be amazed at how alive you'll be instantly. You're gonna be alive instantly, and you're gonna be more alive then than you are now. Because right now, you are limited because of this physical body. But there's coming a day where you won't be limited by this physical thing no more. Won't be. Phys- won't be. Anyway, it goes on. And he said to the, to the paralyzed man, get up, take your bed and your mat and go home. And then the man, what? Got up and went home. But notice this. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Rise and walk. Healing and death are together with that thing called sin. I hope I'm making sense. Everybody getting that? All right, so listen to this. Here's another example of this, John chapter five, where the guy at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus heals the guy. The guy says, you know, Jesus asked him, do you wanna be made well? The guy says, I have nobody to take me in there. He said, hey, don't worry about it. Rise, take your bed and walk. Now watch this. Later on, Jesus finds him in the temple and here's what we find. But then one who was healed did not know who it was For Jesus had withdrawn. In other words, he didn't know where he was or who he was. A multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him, the guy that was healed, in the the temple. And he said to him, see, you have been made well. Look at it. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. What was he saying? Sin no more. Don't allow sin in because sin brings... If you want to live free from... Death, live free from sin. And he's not talking about we have to be sinless. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus came and died for our sin, thereby defeating death on the cross. Does that make sense, everybody? So here's the the next thing I want to say, and this one seems obvious, but go with me on it. The worst thing that death can do to you is kill you. (laughs) How many of you are like, well, that's obvious. No, 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 Here, here for real. The worst thing that death can do is kill you. When death kills you, it loses. Think, some of you will get that. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about on this. When death attacks an innocent person who is sinless now because you've been saved by the blood of Jesus and washed by the blood of the lamb, when death takes its toll on you and it attacks you and takes you out, guess what? It defeats itself over your life. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down. Some of you have friends and loved ones, family members who have died. And when they died, you thought it was over. No, they actually, when, when death attacked them, it attacked the wrong person because they are alive and well today because death has no power once, it's, once, once they dead, it died. Once they died, once death jumped and got on them, Death killed itself over them because Jesus defeated it 2,000 years ago. Are you, I, is it making sense, everybody? I know it's a little bit deeper and some of you are like, wow, I should have had a shot of cappuccino. But, 
Does it make sense? Are you following? You're tracking with me? Because here's why. I feel like if I can lay a foundation of why death loses its power in your life, you won't walk around fearful of it. And I'm here to tell you we have a whole culture that is, in, that is absolutely embedded with the idea that they're fearful of death. They're worried about death. They, that, I mean, they, they're, just, they're just fearful of everything now. You know what I mean? And I'm here to tell you, Jesus didn't want you to walk around here fearful of everything. Praise God. You've been called to live in freedom. You've been called to live free. You've been called to live free from fear, praise God. And I'm not talking about redneck fear. There's redneck fear out there. Here, hold my beer. Let me go do something stupid. I'm not talking about that kind of fear, all right? People do dumb stuff all the time. All right, come on, y'all picking up what I'm putting down. All right, I'm not talking about doing stuff like that. I'm talking about you don't have to be walking around in a spirit of fear all day. You can be uh, you, you can walk and know, listen, until God is done with me on this planet, I am not walking around in fear, praise God. I'm not fearful of anything, praise God. Amen? I'm gonna walk in faith and believe God. The worst thing that death can do is it can try and kill you. And if it does, it violates its own principle and it kills itself. This is what the word teaches. Listen to this. Revelation says this. This is why the Bible says this. Watch this. And then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the... Uh huh. From now on, from now on, from now on. Why? Because death loses its power at that point. It says, yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. That's right. Listen to this, another verse, Romans 6, 8. Look at this. Now, if we died with Christ, how many of you know that Jesus died death for us all? He died for us all. We believe that we shall also live with, we're alive in Christ. Does that mean are we full of sin? Or are we sinless in him? We're sinless in him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Hmm, it's been defeated. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to? He's talking about us too. He's talking about us too. Think about it like this. You ready? Look at this verse, Hebrews 2.14. Inasmuch then as children have been partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. In other words, Jesus took on flesh and blood and suffered the same just as we did. He says, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power over death, of death, that is the devil. The devil thought he would beat Jesus with death. But it actually was death that got beat when Jesus died. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. We should not walk around fearful of it because Jesus defeated it for us. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. And how many of you know we are the seed of Abraham? You say, what exactly is it talking about right there? Well, it's actually talking about if you want to go over into Luke, you will find out whenever it says he gives aid to Abraham's seed, he's actually talking about angelic hosts. Here's the point that I'm trying to make with that. What you will find with that is that whenever you breathe your last breath, there are angels that are going to escort you to heaven. People say, why is that? Well, because men won't ask for directions, so God wants to make sure <laughs> people get there. <clears throat> I'm joking, kind of, but anyway, uh, but the reality is this, you ready, everybody? That, listen, God is going to make sure that as we breathe our last breath on this planet, we are absolutely taken care of, and death has no power. I have more, I, I have so much on this, so much content on this, I didn't even know where to start this week in talking about this. And I don't know, I've thought about doing a series, like I said, on this subject of death, because really if you get down in it and, and, and really start tearing it apart, it actually is amazing what God did with it and how God healed it and how God, God, how God, how God created it and destroyed it by his own working of his own power. Yes. It's a powerful thing whenever you begin to think about it. Now, here's, here's my point though. There's so much in this as far as death, as far as we are free from it, 
That when we accepted Christ, we walked over death and now we're in eternal life. We are in eternal life. There's nothing, you're in eternal life. You have eternal life on the inside of you. Now, now your body's gonna be laid to the dirt. Sure, that's fair. But you're just, a, you're gonna be more alive then than you are now. This body is actually holding you back from experiencing everything. Let me say it this way. The only thing that hasn't got the memo that you are resurrected is your body. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. You know? And there is a day coming where that's going to happen too. <laughs> For sure. You say, Pastor Troy, really? Yeah, look at this. Philippians 3. It says it this way. For our citizenship is in where? Heaven, that's right. From which we also eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies. Can I get a witness on that? Transform our lowly bodies. Uh, in, uh, that it may be conformed to, the glorious, to, uh, to his glorious, look at this. That it may be conformed to his glorious body. All right? According to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. How many of you know you are trading in a, a temporal body for a glorious body? First Corinthians talks about it even more and a little bit deeper and even better, I think. It says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. And he's talking about our physical bodies. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, die, all right? But we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Changed. Listen to this, everybody. Everyone that has died before us has went to heaven, all right? That, that's born again, has went to heaven, okay? They do not have their glorified bodies yet. They don't. They have a temporal body in heaven. When you and I, if the rapture doesn't happen before we get there, we will have a temporal body in heaven, our soul and our spirit are born again, right? And we will have a temporal body in heaven. And then the earth will go on, provided that we don't go in the rapture, okay? Now, and, and how many of you know, by the looking around this place, the rapture's capping pretty quick, or at least I'm believing that. Can I get a witness on that? I don't even know, I can't wait. I, every time that I, oop, there, maybe, no, all right. I feel a bump in the car, and I'm like, oh, there was, no, all right. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, so, so check this out. So now watch. So the rapture, the rapture, those that have went to heaven, they can't wait for the rapture. They're so excited for the rapture because at the rapture, those that are alive on the earth will be caught up in the air at the same time with those who are in heaven, and will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And watch this. Then our bodies will catch up with our spirit and our soul, and it will all be transformed. Praise God. And we'll all have resurrected bodies at that point in time. We'll be able to move at the speed of thought. We'll be able to pass through walls. We'll be able to fly. <laughs> I'm excited about that. But anyway... In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will, will be raised, what? Incorruptible, and we shall be all, what? Changed, that's right. For this corruptible must put on, isn't that cool, that my body eventually will be incorruptible. You know why you and I sin right now? You know why we sin? You know, it's our flesh. Most of us, or let me say 90. 99, 99% of us don't want to disobey God, but we still do. Isn't that fair? We still do. You know what I mean? We still do. We miss it every once in a while, either on purpose or by accident. We miss it. Okay. But why? It's because our flesh, our flesh, our flesh is drawn to that. Our flesh identifies with sin and death easier than it does being born again because we got it from Adam right? But there's coming a day where we won't have to battle that thing no more. Our flesh will line up with our spirit and our flesh will line up with our soul. And then guess what? There will be no limits to what God can do in our world. Isn't that fair? Because it'll be a glorified body without sin, won't even be attracted to sin. 
It goes on to say, it says, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in. There's a day coming where death will kill its last person. Y'all hearing it? Death will kill its last person. Oh, death, this is what goes on to say, oh, death, where is your sting? You have got no power over us anymore. Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Watch this. And the sting of death is, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Singing about it, last verse, reads it this way. It says, then, it's talking about that at the very end, then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death. Singing about it like this, and I'm sure you may or may not have heard this before, but check this out. For the Christian, for the Christian, we'll go with them first. You're born twice and you only die once. You're born in earthly birth, and then you're born again. And then you only lay down this physical flesh one time, that's it. You know what I mean? But to the sinner, you're born once and die twice. You're born into the earth. You never accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then you die a physical death, but then the Bible teaches you die a spiritual death too. Separated God from me for eternity. You know what I mean? So even though God has it planned that we would all have a glorified body and we would all see death defeated, do you know what? There are gonna be people that don't see that simply because they don't believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I'm here to tell you what a shame that would be that you would live out your whole life knowing that God has already defeated death and here you are not accepting the sacrifice so that you could see death defeated. And I just believe with all my heart, God wants you to see death defeated over your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Praise God. So let me pray for you. And I'm here, I'm here to tell you, if you're here and you don't, you don't know where you'd be in light of eternity, you're not, you don't know if you'd go to heaven, why don't you pray this prayer with me, you know? Pray this prayer. Pray it with all of your heart, and I will assure you with all my heart, you'll be on your way to heaven. You know, there's no reason for you not to look forward to a new glorious body and death defeated over your life if... You've accepted Christ. Y'all know what I'm saying? So let me pray. Let me pray and then I'll ask you to join me. Father, I lift up each and every person under the sound of my voice and I pray that you bless them, touch them and minister to them. Father, I thank you for your word, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you have declared that death is defeated over our lives. And Father, I pray right now that each and every one of us would live with an expectancy to see death defeated and see your life in us and us living in that, God. And Father, I pray that each and every person would walk in the revelation of that. And Lord, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, I pray that today would be their day. Or someone watching, I pray that today would be their day. So I'm going to ask you to pray. If you would like to accept Christ, I want you to pray this out loud with me. If you uh, have already accepted Christ, I want you to pray it with me. Everybody can pray. So everybody join with me and say this. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. So therefore, I put my faith, I put my trust in him today, in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody says amen. Give the Lord a big, big clap. Praise God. Amen.